This Starbucks cup is less than $1. But how? Why is it that a company like Starbucks can afford to sell them for such a low price? The keyword is volume. Companies use a process called injection molding to make their plastic products in volume. Injection molding is expensive in the short term, but in the long term, it's actually less expensive than some other technologies out there like 3D printing, for example. Wow. I'd like to show when a company might choose injection molding rather than say 3D printing to make their plastic products cheaper. Let's head on inside and run through the process. We'll start by redesigning the plastic reusable Starbucks cup. Now that that's done, a company called Protolabs provides quotes for 3D CAD, so let's upload the design there to receive a quote for an injection mold to manufacture these in bulk. Stay tuned until the end of this video to find out how the cost per cup differs between 3D printing and injection molding. Now while we wait on a quote, let's make some phone calls to some local Starbucks in the Bay Area. We'll ask how many cups they get shipped each month, and that will then allow us to estimate the number of Starbucks cups made on an annual basis. I'm, I'm working for a small coffee shop business in San Jose. I'm trying to get like a ballpark estimate of how many of those plastic reusable cups that you guys sell for like a buck, ten. We're, we're trying to manufacture our own and we're wondering like how many you, you either order per month or I guess maybe sell per month. Uh, we get them in like a box and the box will carry, I believe, eight leaves of 12. That will last us about a month. Beginning of the season, which was I think at the beginning of January, we got like a box of them, which probably had like 50 to 100, and we still have plenty. Okay, so like maybe like a hundred a quarter or something. Yeah, like I assume that's enough. Okay, like we'll have like 50 in a sleeve, and they usually send us like like four or five sleeves a month. Okay. Yeah. Usually like like five for like like month or so. Oh, five per month. That's. Not a lot. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would say a couple a day. We honestly don't go through that many, but a lot of people here are not for their cost. We, we do get deliveries of them, like, like once a month or something like that. If you get it delivered, like, once a month, maybe, like, 30 of them. That would probably be a fair estimate, yeah. That's 50 per sleeve, and there's about, say, five of those sleeves per box. Like every month or you'll just yeah, order more? Yeah, we, we order more. And then okay. Sometimes when we order a case of 25 and we don't need to order for like two months. Oh wow, okay. So I think I've been here when we sold at least two of them. Okay. It's not super frequent, but like I do, like, I do at least sell like a couple a day. The median number of cups ordered monthly was 61. There are 35,711 Starbucks worldwide. If each location gets 61 cups shipped per month, that's 26,140,452 cups per year. Now, with that number in mind, let's visit the 3D printing process we briefly touched on earlier we'll be using FDM or fused deposition modeling in this example. FDM is a process that uses a continuous filament of a thermoplastic material. A thermoplastic material is a polymer that can become pliable at elevated temperatures. Once a thermoplastic material temperature is lowered, it can then solidify and cool into its newly printed shape. And we're using FDM 3D printing only as a comparison in this example. By no means should anyone attempt to 3D print products intended to come in contact with food or drink, and all3dp.com has an in-depth guide outlining the risks. I'll leave a link to that article in the description below. Now, some of the pros of 3D printing include being able to manufacture in your own home. You get started just under $200 with a DIY kit, and it has the ability to make quick changes to the product design. Now, some of the cons of 3D printing include it takes a longer processing time and there's a limitation to the size of the part that you can make. There's also a limited material selection. Now, Starbucks cups are not 3D printed. Starbucks cups are injection molded. They're injection molded out of a thermoplastic material called polypropylene. Polypropylene is used because it retains heat well 
and prevents leakage. Polypropylene has a high melting point, which makes it safe for dishwasher and microwave use. For our 3D printing analysis though, we're going to use a material called food safe ABS. We're not using polypropylene for 3D printing because, well, it's difficult to 3D print and food safe grade ABS has heat retention and leak prevention properties similar to polypropylene, but 3D printers can use ABS on a general consumer level with proper ventilation, of course. Let's run through the numbers if we FDM 3D printed each plastic cup. For a company like Starbucks, this means tens of millions of plastic cups each year. 1,045. The number of years it would take to 3D print a year supply of Starbucks cups using 20 3D printers at the same time. $73,730,000. The cost it would take to 3D print a year supply of Starbucks cups. That's quite the price to pay and quite the time to wait for a company like Starbucks. And if you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button. We just reached 5,000 subscribers and the next milestone's 10,000. Now let's pivot on over to injection molding. Injection molding injects molten plastic material into a mold at high pressures. This process requires a large injection molding machine and the manufacturer typically rents out that machine, but the mold to create the coffee cup is typically paid for by the company, hence why we requested a mold quote earlier from Proto Labs. The quote was $13,000 for a single cavity mold. Family molds molding more than one part at once are more expensive. I quadrupled the estimate from Proto Labs of each mold leaving our cost per mold at $52,000. Some of the pros of injection molding, you could get a low cost per part when it's done in volume. It's also very fast compared to 3D printing. There's a large material selection. Some of the cons of injection molding include that it has a high initial cost to manufacture the mold. There's also a long initial lead time due to creating that mold. And there's little to no design flexibility due to the fact that the mold is machined out of metal. Let's run through the numbers as if we injection molded the cups now. 16. The number of days it would take to injection mold a year supply of Starbucks cups. This assumes 20 injection molding machines, each using an eight cavity family mold. $6,277,000. The cost it would take to injection mold a year supply of Starbucks cups. I'd like to break down how I arrived at these cost estimates. For quantity, we'll use our annual quantity of 26,140,452. We'll use a 2% defect rate, which means 2% of the parts we make do not meet our quality assurance standards. As a result, our actual run quantity is larger. This number comes out to be 26,663,262. For material, we'll be using polypropylene, and we'll round up here and assume that we can order a bulk quantity of resin at about one dollar per pound. Part volume is exactly what it sounds like. It's the volume of the part. The volume for each cup is 3.15 cubic inches. A tonnage calculator calculated the total tonnage needed to produce our part. I used hightechmoldtool.com. The total came to 1,294 tons to process our eight cavity Starbucks cup family mold. Custompart.net assumes a cost estimate of just under 6% of the total tonnage, so that brings our hourly machine rate to $73 per hour. For machine setup time, I assume a setup time to get a single machine up and running would be around an hour, 20 machines. This results in 20 hours and brings our total setup cost to $400 to prepare all the molds. Having set up an injection mold before personally, I know this process can certainly take longer, but these are experts who do this on a daily basis, so I'm hoping they're a little more efficient than I was. In injection molding terminology, cycle time is four separate phases. The accumulation of these phases creates the total cycle time to create our part. Cycle time and cooling line locations can be a science in and of itself. We'll assume our eight cavity family mold has a cycle time of 18 seconds. This means that every two and a half seconds, we're producing one cup. That's pretty cool, right? With all these costs in mind, let's compare the cost per cup between these two processes. Here's our 3D printing results. We have a startup cost of $14,000 for 20 3D printers each with one spool of filament, a cup print time of seven hours per cup, a material usage of 60 grams per cup, a cost per cup of $2.82, and a time to manufacture of 1,045 years. Let's compare that 
to our injection molding process. A startup cost of $1,041,000 for 20 injection molds with one pound of resin to start. A cycle time per cup of two and a half seconds. The same material usage of 60 grams per cup, a cost per cup of 24 cents, and a time to manufacture of 16 days. As we can see, a company like Starbucks that has the capital to do so will always use the injection molding process. The time to completion along with the cost per cup are just too good to pass up. So, you know, the next time you purchase your reusable polypropylene Starbucks cup, not only will you know a random fact about the material it's made of and why, but you'll know exactly why they can charge you just over $1 and still make a profit. If you all enjoyed this video, please subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one.